issue with the time, taking something that isn't easily classified or contained and trying to make it available for others. I don't have an on-off switch. Hill, who was set to perform at Atlanta's Chastain Park Amphitheater at 8 p.m. on Friday, was met with boos from the crowd when she finally took the stage at 10.20 p.m., according to the New York Daily News. The venue had a strict 11 p.m. curfew, and Hill's microphone was cut just 40 minutes into the concert. She continued to sing for a few minutes over the crowd's booing. She continued acknowledging her past incidents of arriving late before promising fans that she will make it up. For every performance that I've arrived to late, there have been countless others where I've performed in excess of two hours beyond what I'm contracted to do, pouring everything out on the stage. Uh, She also added, I have nothing but love and appreciation for the fans in Atlanta. I regret not being able to give you a full show. We're figuring out a plan to make it up to you, and we'll announce details as soon as we have them. Hill last made headlines in February when she was expected to perform at the 2016 Grammy Awards alongside The Weeknd, but canceled the day of the ceremony, stating that she had no time to prepare. Kesha has returned to the stage once again to perform Lady Gaga's ballad about sexual assault till it happens to you at a Humane Society gala in Los Angeles. Um, The singer said on stage Saturday along the Humane Society honoree Diane Warren on piano who wrote the piece, I want to dedicate this song to every man, woman, child, and animal that has ever been abused. Photos of animals being packed into farms and was displayed behind Kesha during the performance. Gaga applauded Kesha on Twitter for her cover, which received a standing ovation writing, hashtag uh, killed it at Kesha Rose. I can feel your pain. Girls, these boys won't be in charge forever. The wisdom of women is rising. Let's get louder. The song, which was released in September for the documentary The Hunting Ground, a film that exposes the, uh, fo- focuses on rape crimes that take place on U.S. college campuses. The performance comes after Kesha recently a recent court battle with music producer Dr. Luke, with whom she said sexually, emotionally, and physically abused her throughout their professional relationship. The star-studded gala at the Paramount Studios was also included by performances by Steven Tyler, Aliona Lewis, and featured guests such as Kate Mara, Jenny Accio, Riley Neuf, Nikki Reed, Ian Smolderhalder, and the Veronicas. Kesha shared photos of her long, flowing uh, pink gown, from the event on Instagram where she also thanked the Humane Society for making her an international ambassador and Gaga and Warren for creating Till It Happens to You. She wrote, Thank you for at Lady Gaga, Till It Happens to You, written by a fucking genius, and at Warren underscore Diane plus Gaga. It's such a vulnerable display of courage and hope. Thank you both so much for bringing that message to the world in the form of such a beautiful song. It was an honor to perform it last night. Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band are extending the River Tour, with which the iconic rock and roll group kicked off in January. A newly announced shows will start August 23rd at the MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The other stops through September 14th will be in Chicago, Washington, D.C., Virginia Beach, Virginia, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Foxborough, Massachusetts. The concerts will follow 37 initial North American dates. The band will start an 11-week European trek May 14th in Barcelona. Shows are also planned for Italy's Rock and Rome and Portugal's Rock and Rio Lisbia. Nick Jonas is still seeing rumored love interest Kate Hudson. The 23-year-old singer and actor discussed the 37-year-old actress on Monday's episode of The Ellen DeGeneres Show after being spotted with Hudson prior to the Met Gala last week. Um, he, Jonas said of the Mother's Day star, she's great. It was great. We had a group dinner the night before the Met Gala. Lots of people. She was there and I was there. It was a group. Jonas and Hudson were first linked in October and have been seen together several times since. Singer insisted that he's single. However, when DeGeneres inquired about his relationship status, the actor said, I really am single, before revealing he and brother Joe Jonas recently moved in together in Sherman Oaks, California. Jonas also insisted he's single in the February-March issue of Complex Magazine, but gushed about Hudson in the interview. He previously dated Olivia Cooper while Hudson split from Matthew Bellamy in 2014. The actor said, Kate's incredible. We had an unbelievable connection as two humans who just admire things about each other and see something in each other that's beautiful. He also added, out of my best effort to respect her and her privacy, I'm not going to say if we had sex or not, but we did have a beautiful connection. Even now, I have so much admiration and respect. She's amazing. Hudson, meanwhile, called Jonas a great guy while discussing her book Pretty Happy in February. The actress will next appear in Deepwater Horizon, while Jonas will kick off his Future Now tour with Demi Lovato in June. 
Justin Bieber has a new tattoo, and it's on his face. The 22-year-old Canadian singer got a tattoo of a tiny cross near his left eye. Bieber showed off the ink on Instagram prior to his show Saturday in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The star captioned a selfie featuring the new tattoo. Resting up for the show in Philly, it's going to be a good one. Mark my words. Sources told Us Weekly, Bieber and friend Joe Termini got matching crosses at West Fort Tattoo Shop Friday in New York. Singer tattoo artist John Boy later explained the significance of Bieber's ink. John Boy told the magazine Justin came in last night and decided on a small cross near the corner of his eye. It represents his journey to find purpose with God. Bieber has several other tattoos, including one of ex-girlfriend Selena Gomez. He has since tried to cover up. The singer previously expressed interest in a face tattoo to GQ magazine and said he'll wait until he was older to get one. He said, I think if they if they are done right, they could be cool, but not nothing super crazy all over the face. Maybe when I'm really old, not super old, but maybe like 40s or 50s or something. One above my eyebrow or something small. Bieber released his fourth studio album, Purpose, in November, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 albums charts, including the singles What Do You Mean and Sorry. He kicked off his company tour March 9th in Seattle, Washington. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1977, Joan Crawford dies. Legendary actress Joan Crawford dies on this day of a heart attack in her New York City apartment. Born Lucille Fay Lassure, her birth year has been variously recorded as 1904 or 1908. Crawford was a nightclub dancer who broke into Broadway musicals in the jazz age of the 1920s. She first twisted her way into Hollywood stardom as a vivacious flapper in the 1928 silent film Our Dancing Daughters. She made a series of similar pictures, including Dancing Lady 1933, which co-starred Fred Astaire in his silver screen debut. Crawford's seamless transition into the sound film era made her one of the most popular and by the late 1930s one of the highest paid leading ladies in Hollywood. She fought for more varied and less stereotypical parts, winning dramatic roles in films such as The Women in 1939, Susan and God in 1940, Strange Cargo in 1940, and A Woman's Face 1941. In 1945, just when her career appeared to be on the wane, Crawford turned in the performance for which she would be most remembered, playing the title role in Mildred Pierce. As the waitress and single mother who makes her fortune with a chain of restaurants, Crawford won an Academy Award for Best Actress and established herself as a respected dramatic actress. She would be nominated for another Best Actress Oscar for 1947's Possess and a third for 1952's Sudden Fear. By the late 1950s, Crawford had become a representative for the Pepsi-Cola Company, whose uh, board chairman and chief executive, Alfred N. Steele, she married in 1955. Three previous marriages to actors Douglas Fairbanks Jr., French Tell, and Philip Terry had ended in divorce. When Steele died in 1959, Crawford was named the first female director of Pepsi-Cola's board. In 1962, the tenacious actress made a celebrated foray into the horror genre with Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, co-starring Betty Davis. Having always enthusiastically welcomed and cultivated her fame, Crawford published her autobiography, A Portrait of Joan, that same year. She went on to make a number of thrillers in the last years of her career, as well as occasional appearances in television dramas. Less than two years after Crawford's death in 1977, her adopted daughter Christina published Mommy Dearest, in which she alleged that the famous actress had been emotionally and physically abusive to Christina and her adopted brother. The book was later made into a critically panned film starring Faye Dunaway as Crawford. And as your entertainment report for Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. I'm your host, Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.